Hi, my name is Riley, and I'm here to talk about my mom, Carrie Rigby Wilcox. Art, reading, writing, wishes to be known for her art, dreams of becoming famous, who wants to travel around Canada to talk about her book, who fears about her life and what it will be when she goes around Canada, who fears of people laughing at her, who believes in herself, who loves art, who wanted the best for her child and preparing to write a new book called My Mom Was Afraid of the Library. Um, Carrie growing up was a really happy kid and our house was like the community. All the kids kind of just flocked to our house. And then I went to kindergarten. I went to this place called school and it was absolutely amazing. There was stations and toys and colors and everything coming off of the ceiling. Every corner of the classroom was plastered with stuff. It was just, it was so amazing to go to kindergarten. But then as I grew up, the, the books that I used to look at at the library, they were losing their color and their glow and their characters because now we had to read, you know, older kids' books with just less, um, less images, more words. I had a really hard time. I didn't actually visually see letters on the page. I just didn't really see it. I seen the images and everything else, but the words weren't there for me. And so when I realized that I was stuck in a situation where I had to read in front of the whole entire class, for me, that was, that was the moment that I knew really what was wrong with me. I looked at the books on the side and I grabbed a book that I remember that the librarian had read. I sat up straight, I imitated the librarian, I made some really good jokes and I had them entertained and I flipped the pages and one of these kids said, teacher, teacher, that's not the way the story goes. I, from that moment on, I promised myself I would never ever be caught in that situation again. Many of us take literacy for granted because it's just always been a part of our life. For those that struggle with literacy, we don't always think about all the challenges that they go through and how hard they have to overcome and, and work to overcome and for many of them to, to hide it because for many it's a secret. Teachers are more aware of different disabilities or different things or different coping mechanisms for students. They didn't have that back then. You know, when I went years and years and years, hundreds of years ago, they didn't really know anything about dyslexia and all that stuff. So that is why, you know, someone said that I was mentally retarded and I never function in the everyday world. I ended up going to a resource room in public school. I was with a teacher. She sat with me and I was doing work that I was able to do. I felt smart in the resource room. The only problem for me with the resource room was the title, resource room, on the outside of the door. So I felt ashamed. I went through the school system. I knew that you had to get your grade 12. I know that if they had failed me, I would have been devastated. That would have been the end of me if I would have failed a class. So after graduating, I wanted to move away. I wanted to run away. I wanted to start a new life where nobody knew me, nobody knew my secret. I could be the Carrie I wanted to be. I honestly had really huge dreams, huge desires, huge goals. And when I went to Edmonton, I'm standing there. I cannot fill out an application. I cannot write a resume. I cannot get my dream job. And I recall Carrie saying, when, like we all do on occasion, take our children to see a, a doctor. And she was given a prescription. And her deep concern at not being able to read carefully the instructions on a prescription for her child. Uh, that's a, that's a life-changing moment. We so take for granted things like literacy, uh, just picking up the phone book, opening up, you can't use your iPhone to send your text messages, you don't have email, you don't have access to the internet, you can't look anything up. I, good Lord, if I could not use the internet, I certainly couldn't do the job that I was doing right now. <laughs> Every day you're doing research of some kind and, and our world is changing so rapidly that if you can't keep up with technology, which literacy is a huge part of that, um, you're just going to just have larger and larger and larger walls put up. 
Reed Saskatoon, we've been around for over 35 years, providing literacy services to adults and families. So we work with adults 18 and over, and our adults come from all different walks of life. Some have multiple barriers in their life. Sometimes they've dropped out of school, they might have moved around in school, maybe learning and education wasn't valued in the home as they grew up. I think the majority of our adult learners are women. They earn less than $30,000 a year, and 80% of our learners are employed. But every learner that walks through the door is unique, and unique in their needs, and unique in, in what their, their goals are and what they want to pursue. I worked in literacy for a while. Then when I went back to teaching at university, it just seemed natural to be a literacy tutor as well and uh, give back the kind of uh, privileged education that I'd received. So when I moved to Saskatoon, the first thing I did was uh, find out who the local literacy group was and I phoned Reed Saskatoon and did their training and then uh, I was matched up with Carrie. So when Lisa and I started, um, we had, you know, we did have an environment that wasn't comfortable for me. And so Lisa noticed that I wasn't, I couldn't focus. We ended up going away from the library and she would come to my house at that time. I had Stephen, he was a baby. And um, we worked together in, in my comfort zone. We started working in 1991. We tried some children's books, we did some workbooks. That wasn't very fun. The first thing I think that really held her interest was a book on art. But then uh, Carrie mentioned that she had seen Anne of Green Gables on TV. And she said, that's a book. I've always wanted to read that book. Harvest is ended and summer is gone, quoted Anne Shirley, gazing across the shorn fields dreamily. She and Diana Berry had been picking apples in the Green Gables orchard, but were now resting from their labors in the sunny corner where airy fleets of thistledown drifted by on the wings of a wind that was still summer sweet with the incense of ferns in the haunted wood. But everything in the landscape around them spoke of autumn. Up until just before my time, people did what was called choral reading. And one of the things about the Anne books was she was a reciter of poetry. And there were competitions where people would recite poems out loud. And people did that for fun before television. In some ways, what we were doing was rediscovering the pleasures of uh, reading out loud to one another. You know, we started reading one-on-one -on -one and reading out loud, reading uh, words out of the dictionary, Atlas, was absolutely huge learning. Our preferred method is she reads one page and I read a page, and in early days, it allowed her to hear me reading, and I think that helped her with uh, word attack skills and, and just expression in reading. Now, we read back and forth as a book club for pleasure and discuss the story as we're reading it. As if Mama Makutsi had been away for months or even years, had embarrassed the men who had exchanged glances and then looked away as if guilty at the inst instruments. Oh, in, if you invade or it's like intrude. intrusion. Yeah. yeah. Intrusion into... See, these books are harder. <laughs> um, like, Essentially, yeah. female m m mysteries. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I guess when I'm looking at a word or when I was struggling with a word, if I haven't seen it before, I'm not going to be able to sound it and figure it out. Somehow I don't have the phonics. It feels like my brain is missing that little thing in there that just kind of gets it fast. A lot of children and adults have a learning disability and something's not working right between the eye and that black and white uh, stuff on the page. With Carrie at first, she said the words jumped all over the page. So of course she used a ruler uh, to read. She, she'd use her bookmark. But it's always quicker to take the gearbox out. If you don't, you end up taking the floor out. And anyway, you have to take the top of the gearbox off and the prop shaft too. I have no idea what any of that means, well, but I can presumably find out you do. I'll tell you next week. <laughs>
Then Carrie progressed from reading to uh, deciding that she wanted to write some of her own stories, and that started with children's books. This is the 10 little ladybugs in my jar. So 10 little ladybugs swinging on a vine. I opened the lid, then there were nine. I have two older children, Stephen and Melanie, and when they were in school, um, I wasn't quite a really good reader. I was very scared to walk through that sc those school doors. I was really scared of the teachers. For Carrie, um, as a child that wasn't as successful in school, it was really hard for her to even have the courage to come for interviews. And I'm so grateful that she took that risk to come to our school and then eventually became a member of our school community council. I remember her sharing, well, I'm not sure you're gonna want me here. And it's like, you are the exact person we want sitting at the table because you can share what it's like to not be as successful in school. And those are the parents that you represent that might be in the same boat that are afraid to come into school. So her taking that risk to first join our school community council, I can never thank her enough for that because it, it's opened our eyes and it makes, I think, us a better school because we're aware of it. The connection with the teachers, you know, that for me is one of the biggest things that I'm grateful for to, to be, not to be afraid of the, of the teachers because I thought that they were like, you know, they were way up here and I was way down there. They do not make me feel like that at all. I wrote the story on, where's my paper? Here's my story. Just 10 little ladybugs in my jar. And this was like your school paper with a normal school pencil, just like that. I wrote the story out. You know, I can't explain why her journey was the way it was, but I feel very confident and pleased that in Prairie Spirit School Division, we work with a team of collaborators that um, include speech and language and occupational therapists and psychologists that if we see a child struggling, we're able to intervene and try to help them the very best we can. So we hope we don't have kids fall through the cracks. I'm not saying it would never happen, but it's our goal that it wouldn't. We really want them to be positive learners and to love literature and love learning and, and be able to be successful at it. Then this was my first very drawing of what my ladybug was gonna look like. That is why he is my favorite. What did we write just after Christmas? Oh, uh, Nakia. We, we we wrote did. our own stories and we did our own illustrations and so it's really neat for us to hear about somebody who's written and illustrated their own book, right? So thank you very much for being such a great influence in the school. We really, really, really appreciate it. Grade one one more time. What do we do? The Saskatchewan Literacy Network is another literacy organization in Saskatchewan and I sat on the Learner Advisory Board there. Then I was able to go to Ottawa to, uh, at that time was Movement for Canadian Literacy, MCL. I go to Ottawa and I meet learners from all across Canada who are exactly like me. And when I met them, I realized that there was others that hadn't made it to that point, that hadn't made to a school that don't know about tutoring programs, that I did not want anyone that struggled with literacy issues to sit alone and not realize that there was others like them out there. With the mommy book, my goal in life was that the book be positioned in a school so that the kids would take it home and read it to the parents so that they might realize Oh, there's a tutoring? There's a tutoring problem? Oh, great. So that they might go and get help. I met Carrie first when I was Premier through Reed, Saskatoon. And I can say without a word of doubt, this woman was an inspiration to me and, uh, and to the government that I led. I had an opportunity, as, again, as Premier, to, to travel the province and see literacy work that's happening in small communities and large communities, north, south, um, rural, urban. Tremendous programs. And uh, I thought the, the monies, some of the program dollars that we were able to invest in that work, some of the best money that I, uh, I observed being spent in government. We're making a difference. Um, and it just 
keeps me going. It keeps me going. And the one time we were up in Pine House, actually, Saskatchewan, and um, a lady came up to her after she shared her story. And I witnessed this, right? So she had come up to Carrie afterwards and she said, you know, your story could be my story. Men always come up to me after a speech and they said, I, I know, Carrie, that that's a story about a mom, but that's my story too. I want to thank you for writing it. I want them to have a book for themselves. Year after year, night after night, my dad sat beside me watching and listening, but most of all supporting me. He explained that the more I learned, the more he learned, and the more courage grew inside both of us. This book really, you know, it's done so much already. It was put into um, the Moonbeam Children's Book Award. And out of hundreds of hundreds of entries, this was a tie actually for bronze. And I'm just so proud of what it's accomplished because it is about just supporting your child. And it's, I hope that it shows that parents don't need to know their children's homework and their answers, but to know that just sitting with their child is enough support. We were really pleased and thrilled when Carrie said that she would donate a dollar from every book sold of My Dad Couldn't Read to the Saskatoon Food Bank and Learning Centre. It just goes to show how much Carrie is not just about promoting herself and her books as a, as a business person, but that she really is concerned with the community and wanting to promote literacy across Canada, really, and right here in Saskatoon as well. I'm always hoping, and I got a feeling, gonna be a reason to celebrate soon. So he is to hoping, and he is to dreaming, cause somewhere just around the corner. There has been, I think, a growing sense in Canada of the importance of literacy, and I think it's fair to say that we've made some progress. There is still a good deal of work to do. There are yet too many uh, um, young people and not so young people in our communities that need greater literacy skills. Uh, there's much work to do. But I think it is fair to say that with the leadership of people like Carrie, who show that inspirational leadership, we have made progress and there has been change. Literacy and health and education are all interrelated and once one goes, you struggle with the others. Kinsmen purchased the old St. George's Community Centre and they are looking to redevelop the facility into a community centre for learning for kids right through to senior citizens. So the Community Learning Commons will sort of help to address the issues that are at the root of the cause for each one of those individuals. That's the whole idea is that all of these groups coming together will be able to better help the individuals and the families that come in. I am not stopping talking about or writing about literacy issues. My Mummy Was Afraid of the Library is my next book. I have, it's almost there, a novel that I want for adult learners and I want to keep continuing to bring out books every year. He's to dreaming, and he's to life.